The playoff series bombs edition of the bottom line bombs on a sports gaming podcast network is brought to you by underdog fantasy play their fantasy pick them for a chance to win hundred times the NBA, MLB, MMA, NHL, golf, and more sign up today at underdogfantasy.com using promo code bombs to get a hundred percent deposit match. Plus the NFL draft is coming up and old fashioned football is giving away some autographed NFL merch head to sports podcast.com backslash off contest O F F contest to enter today. That's for old, old fashioned football. Anyway, yeah, you got a bomb for that. Why not? And I'll tell you what else you get. You get a theme song for me. Somewhat of a thing that I do every day, every show. I mean, Welcome to the bottom line bombs. I am your host, CJ Sullivan, the bet detective, the man in the box. Welcome. If you're listening live on Thursday, April 18th, if you're listening later on, that's fine. Time is endless. Time's an endless circle, man. Um, or if you're listening in your car, if you're listening in your car, what's this of course, yes, DJ. If you're listening in your car, look, keep your eyes on the road. Ha ha ha. Anyway, Money Line Mills, welcome to the chat room. Says, let's catch some ladders. I'll give you a little ladder sink, something like that. I just tighten this logo in there. Anyway, welcome to the show today we will be talking nba playoff series bombs uh the pl- playing games were not healthy for us Se- healthy good to us oh and four against the spread i apologize see generates got buried started off i didn't get the right script zion and the lakers i was on the pelicans they were about to win I thought the Lakers wanted to avoid the Nuggets, which they should have. They didn't play that great. I mean, they hit a lot of threes. But then Zion's like, all right, I want to do it. And then I didn't realize it never occurred to me during the game. Maybe the Pelicans don't want to play the Denver Nuggets either. Did anyone ever think of that? Maybe the Nuggets don't want to play them. Either way, the script came down and Zion was handed the script and said, yeah, you, you need to leave the game. It's getting too close to you winning. Oh, he was angry. He was throwing things down, storm, but then he left. Who the fuck leaves with three minutes to go with the calf string? Um, you do play to win the game, Mills. I, I understand that. Um, but here's the thing with that. Yeah, you won the game and now you get uh, now you get Denver. Or do you play to win a championship? And, and a lot of people say, well, you have to play that you have to play Denver eventually. Yeah, you're right. You do. But you're better off playing them down the road when maybe they're hurt. God forbid there's an injury, but that's the only way you can win is if they're injured. You need Jokic or Murray to be hurt. Otherwise, you have no chance. That was the thing too. And I and I get it. You want to you want to win, make sure you're in. But do you? Like, yeah, if you risk it to play Golden State or Sacramento, you don't know if you're going to be, you can, then you got a one game situation. You might not be in it at all. Okay. That's fine. I tell you what, you do know that you have no chance against Denver. You're not going to win that. You're, you might as well be out of it. A healthy Denver team. No, I'm not saying down the road you could lose. You could beat. You can beat an injured Nuggets team. That's what you should be openly. They should be openly rooting for that. Well, hopefully someone will take out Jokic's knee, and uh, we were hoping Golden State could have got in there and Draymond Green would have choked him out or something, you know. But that didn't happen because Clay Thompson shot forty-five three three balls over the fucking ocean. My God, Clay Thompson! That was our second loss. We lost. We lost with the Pelicans, and we lost Golden State. Clay Thompson. 
Can you stop shooting three? Hey, shooters got to shoot. That's what they say. Shooters got to shoot your shot. Not, not always. Sometimes shooters got to pass. Sometimes shooters got to live for another day. Sometimes we got to stop giving the ball to Clay Thompson. Anyway, what's up, ML? Says, what's up, CJ and C-Generates? And uh, I'm going to say, and of course, but it, you don't root for injuries, or obviously, but in, injuries in the NBA is a huge part of why teams win championships. Because there is no next man up. You have a superstar to go down. That's it. That's over with. The Bucks, when they want a title, yeah, Giannis is great. The Bucks are great to you. I mean, obviously, he's still to be good. They played Phoenix in the finals. Both teams. Both teams were there because of injuries to everyone else. Phoenix was getting smoked out by the Clippers, and Paul George and Kawhi got hurt. Oh, now we're the one. Now we're the favorites. And then the Bucks were going to lose to Brooklyn, and all of them got hurt. Durant, Harden, Kyrie, they were all hurt. Or protesting vaccinations, whatever the fuck they were doing. Point is, injuries means every look, 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 look at what happened Friday night, or whatever the f- night that was. Pelicans were about to win. Then Zion was told he was hurt. Last night, Jimmy Butler, I was on the Sixers. And Bede looked broken down already. Good God, the playoffs haven't even started yet. And Bede is already broken down. My God. And then Butler got hurt. And he's out for uh, three weeks now. When my, I mean, obviously, we didn't say Miami would be better off not playing. You can't, you got to play your guys. But that's it. They're done. It's a shame. The Bucs are sorry. Good Lord. The, t- the Bucs are my favorite team. Jimmy Butler has too much heart. That was the problem. That's the difference between Zion. I mean, B- Butler was clearly hurt last night. And he's like, yeah, I'm still playing because he's Jimmy fucking Butler. Never looks back, as I said. I've told this story many a time on here when I was in Chicago. He pulled up. I was outside of a bar, and he pulled up with a new truck. No rearview mirrors on it. And I yelled at him, hey, Jimmy. How you doing, Jimmy? And he's like, oh, what's up? Hey, I love your truck. How come you don't have any rearview mirrors on it, though? Where's your rearview mirrors? There was no rearview mirrors on his truck. It was like this fucking souped-up truck. He goes, oh, that's the thing, man. I never look back. <laughs> Jimmy Butler never looks back. Yeah. I don't know if that's street legal, but uh, all right. Sounds good. Jimmy. I'm sure he had some kind of monitor in there, but I I don't, I don't like him taking out on the highway. That's for sure. (laughs) Anyway, where were we? Uh, I should tell you what sense I do have you guys here. And we are talking about the uh, NBA playoffs. The uh, the puck also drops on the Stanley Cup playoffs this weekend. And the Hockey Game on Podcast guys have you covered. Taylon, Ryan, and Joel are breaking down every series leading up to Saturday opening games. And we'll keep the picks and laughs coming all postseason. Subscribe to the Hockey Gambling Podcast wherever you get your podcast. I'll be talking hockey playoffs like maybe next week or sometime. Um I like hockey playoffs. I like I like I like how the hockey playoffs and the NBA playoffs intertwine with each other. They kind of get along, you know. They're opposites, obviously. Hockey and basketball, you couldn't get more opposite. But uh, you know, they they share the same stadium. Crowds are different. They get they 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 move along. Sometimes in the same towns, they can catch off that energy. You know. So anyway, what on today's show, we'll break down a bunch of the series bombs, a couple of the other stories that uh, went into uh, that go into national news of WNBA draft. We missed that. That's already, it's already been 10 different WNBA stories. Jesus Christ. What is wrong with people? No one knows how to cover Caitlin Clark. <laughs> it's kind of hilarious. Uh, we'll talk a little John Tate Porter. And then of course, uh, man in the box. Um, should I get into it right now? What are we at? Nine forty. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I wanted to talk all that stuff. What else did we lose? Yeah, why, why talk about losing? Why talk about losing when we could talk about 
vomiting. Moneyline wants to know if Doc Rivers returns next year. I don't know. Can't blame Mike though. Can't blame you. Can't blame the freak. Dame. Dame doesn't like to play defense. He's a swinging game. Um, they've been awful. The Milwaukee Bucks have been absolutely horrendous. With Doc, they weren't that great without Doc. Doc's been so bad at <laughs> the Bucks. It's kind of the reason. Well, I'll get into it uh, next break when I start talking breaking down all the series. Is but I mean, it's funny now they're re- now they're kind of going out of the way to defend him. Like, well, he did technically he fixed the defense a little bit. They don't let up as many points. I mean, they lose more. They're heartless, but uh, technically they're not giving up as many points. So that's the thing. Um, I don't know if Doc Rivers will come if he returns. It'll be interesting. Um, I don't know how many, how many times can be. is he still part of the council? That was a whole funny thing about him. He was on the the council committee, like the general council for the Bucks, and his and his advice was he was an advisor. He was a paid advisor, and his advice was for them to fire the coach and hire him. I have some advice for you. My, you know, my job is to give you advice. Yeah, I, I, how about my advice is give me another job. Still pay me to advise, but also pay me to do something else. I also uh, have advice for you. Give me uh, the VIP parking. I'll take that. If you take my advice, I'll have the corner office per, per my advice. Doc Rivers is amazing. God bless Doc Rivers. He always falls up. I like him though. Everyone likes him. That's the thing with Doc Rivers. It doesn't matter how bad of a coach he is. People like him. And they love him. Like, ah, oh, that's Doc. He's good. <laughs> he has a wad of $2,000 in cash in his pocket. Just fell out. It's old Doc. Doc's got fun stories. You know, people just like being around Doc. So they don't care how many series leads he blows. I was upset. I did want the Sixers to play the Bucks. That would have been great. And then the Bucks go up 3-1 and blow the lead. That's what they do. All right. Let me get into this ad read. And then, and then only then, will we come back and we'll discuss some NBA series bombs. We'll talk some Jante Porter. We'll talk Caitlin Clark. We'll talk it all. But first, let me tell you about Underdog. Uh, NBA playoffs are here, and our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy, wants to make it a lot more interesting. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. Play to pick them game is simple, selecting higher or lower on the player stats like points, rebounds, assists, and so much more. Make entries of all basketball or mix and match across your other favorite sports. You can win up to 100 times your money, and it's a ton of fun. Underdog is available in 30 states, including California, Texas, and even Canada. I play Underdog Fantasy. I like it. I've been running it up. It is higher or lower. You can cross sport and do all kinds of things, you know, same game parlays. And it's, they usually, they usually they give you a pretty full list of players you can do on there. I don't know if it goes as far down as John Tay Porter, but you'll find your bet if you want it. Underdog is also running a, a ton of different promos, bonus cash, airdrops, specials, giveaways throughout the NBA playoffs. So make sure you follow that underdog picks on Twitter. Keep an eye out. And there is a pick and special for Friday's playing games. The 419 player to determine special should go live in the lobby. Eligible new customers to sign up for the morning. Use promo code bombs. If you're going to do this underdog fantasy, go to underdog fantasy, use promo code bombs, and it'll double your first deposit up to a hundred dollars. That's underdog fantasy promo code bombs. Um, yeah. That should be that should do that should do it for that. Let me get rid of that. There we go, and we're back. Here we are, back in the bombs. Like I said, you can do the um, you can do those uh, early games. There's two games on Friday. The playing games continue, and they lines move drastically because of injuries on Monday and Tuesday, or Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Bulls go to heat. Now, normally I would take the heat here, obviously. It's a one and a half now. But you got to take the Bulls. No Jimmy Butler. Can the Heat win? Sure. But I don't think the Heat want to win. Because they announced that Butler's out for three weeks or so, like, do we really want to go get smoked up in Boston? Let the Bulls do that shit. We're, 
Can we take this year off now that Butler's hurt? So let's bomb the Bulls plus one and a half. Now the Pelicans are and Kings are a different story. I know Zion's hurt, and Zion looked like the only option they had the other night. I still like them to beat Sacramento at home. Pelicans were playing great. They had Brandon Ingram back. He looked like trash, but he'll now be able to step it up now that Zion's out. Uh, and these Kings, don't forget, they're without Monk and Herder, and they were looking terrible down the stretch. And they just had their Super Bowl, if you want, or their New Year's Eve beating Golden State. I mean, they were throwing a ticker tape. I mean, Sacramento is, I mean, it was the greatest party in Sacramento's history, which if you know Sacramento, uh, not saying a lot. Point is, them beating Golden State, revenging last year's playoff game, I think it's kind of a letdown spot. Quick, Quicker turnaround in New Orleans. Gets to stay home. Give me, give me the Pelicans plus one and a half, even without Zion. So, we'll go Bulls and Pelicans for those. Anyway, let's get into the series and the ups and downs and the highers and lowers. We're going to be talking about Javante Porter. We, we should probably should. Just real quick. Just talk a little Javante Porter. Since since I did the underdog fancy higher lower, which it's what it's what it basically is. It's basically in game parlay props, but you have to switch to players. You can't just do you can't load up like these assholes did with I'll take Porter under threes, Porter under rebounds, Porter over eye injuries, over half an eye injury, uh Porter under two shits given. If you don't know the story, of course, Javante Porter, basketball player for Toronto Raptors that nobody's ever heard of, got suspended for life, banned for life from the NBA for making bets. He made a lot of small, stupid bets, $10 parlays, which I want to know what that $10 parlay was um, from burner accounts and whatnot. The thing is, people are making fun of those small bets, but that's not how he got caught. He did that under the radar for a while. Burner counts, a little small bets, didn't really rustle any feathers. What uh, got him caught was when somebody else made a bet in Colorado, where they're from, where Porter's from, an $80,000 parlay of just Porter stats, his unders. The game that he actually left in the middle of with an eye injury, quote unquote. So the parlay paid off and hit for a million or so. And FanDuel, the sports book, reported it to the leagues because it's suspicious activity. It's a suspicious bet, obviously. People don't understand when games are fixed, the books are the ones that really, they're the ones that catch you. They speak out about it because they don't want that. They want to so. What I don't like about this, though, is now FanDuel's, they're making, everyone's trying to make FanDuel the hero here. Fuck FanDuel. Fuck these sports books. Unless they sponsor us. When they, when, once they sponsor us, I will not be saying this. But anyway, fuck FanDuel. Oh, an $80,000 parlay bet was suspicious? The one that you, you granted? You allowed this bet to happen, right, FanDuel? It wasn't suspicious then when they placed it. It was only suspicious when it won. That's when you reported it. That's when you froze the froze the winnings. It's still sitting there for like a million bucks. Now we got to look into this. Really? Would you have frozen it and looked into it if it lost? If let's just say his eye injury did not happen, you would have you would have cashed in. You would have had no problem taking eighty thousand dollars. That's that's what these books are fucking evil. They only freeze it. To pay off a winning, never a loss. You, you can you, know, you can have a bad number. Sometimes that'll happen. Like they'll put a bad point spread up there. Let's just say uh, Miami Heat are one point favorites, and by accident they make a typo and put Miami Heat minus eleven. So you go, oh God, give me the Bulls. It's 10 free points. So you hammer the Bulls. And if it wins, they're not going to pay you. Like, oh, we, we made a mistake. You know, you know, typos are. But if it loses, they're not giving you your money back either. Nope, you made a bet. You lost. Fair and square. Well, it's, it's obviously not fair and square because I never had a chance to win. 
awful suspicious that you allow, that you did that thing that we let you do. What I, I need to know who this one person is. Who is even allowed to make an eighty thousand dollar parlay on Javante Porter's? Like, how are they allowing this? How do they even have his numbers up there? This is insane. You're the one who's suspicious, Vandal. If if you ask me, if you ask the bet detective, the bet detective's all over this. I'm not buying it. Who are they allowing these fucking li- I mean, I can't even get down on it. I couldn't, they let me, I mean, granted, I'm, I'm not a whale to these guys, but my bet online account, they wouldn't let me do more than $10 in the next Kentucky coach. I could get more money down on the Golden Globes than I could on that one. Feach Lamana says, I'm almost starting to miss real life bookies with Albanian mob ties. Like Shohei's interpreter. They are fun. At least they put a little personality into it. A little threats. Like I said last time when he those text messages. Hey, where are you? I see Shohei walking his dog. I'm thinking I might talk to him. Yeah, how are you gonna talk to him? You don't speak Japanese, you dumb fuck. Well, you know what I mean. I agree though. I don't like that it's I don't like when any I don't like when any of the fun stuff gets legalized, to be honest with you. I don't like when weed got legalized. Do I smoke weed? Sure. Edibles? Sure. But I don't like when it's normalized and you go into a dispensary and you got 20 people swarming you like they're at a fucking genius bar and they're talking about weeds and strange. Stop talking about these things. I miss it when a guy came over with a backpack and he tried to hang out all day and you had to kick him out. I want something shady going on. When betting gets on your phone in general, it's just bad. You're out drinking and then you have it right on your phone and they're giving you advertisements nonstop. I mean, this is all happening. <laughs> Sterling announcing that Porter's banned for life with a backdrop of FanDuel behind him is just mwah, chef's kiss. They're announcing this on the FanDuel network and the fucking DraftKings app. That was the problem. He's making parlay bets. If he just would have done it in a legal state with our app, our sponsored NBA app, promo code, (laughs) promo code, we don't give a fuck. We're collecting all the money, and we don't care that children are getting addicted. If he just would have entered that, then it would have been fine. Poor real bookies. There's nothing worse than these. Because because you can't... that's the thing. That's why people still do use some people still use bookies. One, they give you credit. And you can see and you saw what show his interpreter. What could possibly go wrong with credit? Until you could talk to him. You could lie to him. You can't lie to these goddamn online accounts. You can't, oh my grandmother's sick and blah blah blah. They don't care. Sorry, void, refund. Then you try to talk to him, they're you know talking to some customer service over in India. over in India. Anyway. Speaking of bets, let's get into it. <laughs> let's break down the series here. Speaking of avoiding. Orlando, Cleveland, Magic Cavaliers. This is a classic four or five in the East. This should be on. This shouldn't even be on NBA TV. This should be on true TV. The, the, I don't want to see one of these games come near a television. And I like Orlando and Dumb and Mitchell for Cleveland and all that, but I can't take, I don't want to see these Cleveland uniforms with Orlando. I don't want any parts of this. But the Cavs did something interesting. They, they lost on purpose the last game of the season to play Orlando, which I kind of respect because people get so upset about that. Don't no, manipulate the system. The basketball gods. The basketball gods. Anyway, they're a heavy favorite. Minus 205 to Magic plus 175. Um, even without the bad karma, I, I liked Orlando in this series. And at plus 175, that's pretty good. 
Here's the thing also, though, with series prices. They, they move throughout the series. So if you think... Uh, if you think they're going to lose game one and also have a chance to win the game series, you can wait till after the first game and they'll get a, another big number. But much of my first series we're going to play out. It's going to be have Orlando, Orlando. They're a fun, they're a fun team, but they're not that. Fun. I mean, they're weird. You think they'd be young and athletic and offense, but they're, they're not. They kind of play a lot of defense. Panchero is great. Um, but this Cavs team has been kind of a mess. Mitchell and all them in and out. And um, I don't know. I'm going to take a stab at Orlando to win one series plus 175 just because we got it now. What else we got? Um, Moneyline Mills throws a King, Suns, Nuggets, Mavericks, Mace, Pacers, Moneyline Parlay. Well, there we go. See, that's the thing with the, Ma the Mavericks. Nugget, the Mavericks Clippers series should be the best series of the eight possible series. Mavericks are a slight road favorite. They're minus 136. I'm looking at on Bet Online. Clippers are plus 115. Um, this is weird. This is a weird series. Would the Mavericks look great? The Clippers did look great for a while until they did not. Now Kawhi Leonard's out. Here's the thing with Kawhi Leonard. You just don't know if Kawhi Leonard's going to play. And he's all the difference in the world. Obviously. But he's getting to be like him. Be like, what is going on with that fucking knee of his? He left cities because of this knee. He didn't like the treatment he got. What the hell's going on out there? Then you have Luca. I heard Barkley say the other day how Luca dominates the Clippers, and none of those stats are add up to that. The Clippers are eliminating the Mavericks every single time in the playoffs. I mean, he has good games against them, but it's not like they beat them. Um, I actually think the winner of this series is going at least to the Western Conference Finals. The road is there. It's amazing how disrespected the Thunder are as a one seed. I've never seen a more disrespected one seed since Iris and Sixers. Um, but anyway, let's stick to this Mavericks Clippers. You got Mavericks Clippers. You have uh, you have Harden. You have Westbrook. You have such a lot of fun personalities. Luca, Kyrie, Bomber, Cuban, the owners. Bomber giving away all his trash concession foods the other night. Ready to build a new stadium. I just can't. There's value on these Clippers as an underdog. There is. But I just can't trust Kawhi Leonard to be anywhere near healthy. Plus, they can't wait to open that new stadium. They're going to get out of here. They're not going to get out of here with a win. That's how, this is just what the Clippers do. This is a tough draw for them. Um, this Mavericks seem like a team of destiny. Or just a hot team, basically. Billy Joel opening up that new Intuit Stadium next year before the Clippers get in there. Fresh from his CBS special where they cut him off early. Where he goes, model already. Um, so that, this game starts on Sunday. The other game starts on Saturday. Give me the Mavericks, minus 136. That's our second bottle. So, so far we have Orlando and we have Dallas. Orlando plus 175. Let me write these down so I remember. Dallas minus 136 to series bombs. I think Dallas going to the Eastern Conference Finals where they will lose to the Nuggets. Let's talk about that Lakers Nuggets series because they don't want to avoid the smoke. We're, we're, we're getting all the smoke, said Darvin Ham. All right, you get all the smoke. That smoke is from your house on is being on fire. You're going to lose to the Nuggets and get like you have eight straight times. Yeah, but they're a competitive ass eight. That's what they said. It's a competitive ass sweep last year. All right, sure. Kind of. Like I said, this is the wrong time to play them. This is gonna this, and then you're gonna see because you're gonna see Laker fans put their Laker flags at half mast out here on all their cars. 
They are so delusional. They they don't even mention that the reason why they won is because Zion left the game the other night. They don't even talk about that. It's amazing the entitlement of these Laker fans out here in LA. It, they're so funny. Um, obviously, the series price is a little high. Nuggets are minus 375. Lakers are plus 375. So you can go to props. Let's go to some series props here. Personally, I don't think they're going to sweep them again. I do think the Lakers will get one. The Nuggets tried to give them that game four last year. They were up like 30 at halftime. Then they're like, they just stopped playing. Lakers stopped playing. Like, nah, we kind of, we're kind of done. We just wanted to show them that we could do this for a little bit. You know, Megan the Stallion was here. We don't want to get embarrassed. She already left. So if you want to beat us, that's fine. We'd like to end our season. And end their season, they will. The Nuggets are winning this series, obviously. Uh, and five games, I think, is the best way to go. I think they win them both at home in Denver. They split in L.A., then they win game five at home. That's just the way to do it. So to do that, Nuggets 4-1 is plus 270. Bomb that. How crazy is this? You could also do Nuggets. Nuggets minus. See, this is so weird. You got to look at the for, for the prices. Oh, minus two and a half games because they could get a sweep for sure. Um, but I like it. So we'll take that. We'll th I think that's a way to go. Unless you want to parlay the Nuggets with anything. Parlay with game one NFL if you need. <laughs> Just kidding. Um. Mm, just looking at some of these series prices along with you. I should play some. Uh... I broke my back. What do you mean by that? You my broke back, back is broke. Whew, we'll get to some mad reads and then I'll get to some of these trolls that's coming up online. Love to hear it. Love to see it. Love to do it. But first, let me tell you about. Oh, boy. Are we done with the ad reads? I already told you about underdog. Now, I want to tell you, thank you for joining me it's on YouTube. Let me, this, is where I'll put, this is where I'll put with the other ads. That's, so that's what I'll do there. Um, I'll play some things like this. I'll play some, uh, you know. You know what I mean? Oh, why didn't I play this when I talked about the Allen Iverson statue with Rocky? I'll do it next for my Sixers Knicks series. Oh, also, let me write that down. That's my third bomb. Denver in five. Plus 270. Grover the dog. Known troll of CJ the Bet Detective and the man in the box. Says, looking good. Good to see you healthy and beating the Magic Johnson disease. That is a... Not only is that an, is that an age joke, I take it. An old age joke even then? Jeez. And not only is it hack. But it's not even relevant. My God. All right, Grover. I'll give you your moment. I put I put your comment up there. You, you, you attempted to humor. I'll give you that. All right. That, but then I also get to shame you. All right. Let's move on to the uh, <laughs> next series. Let's do that Philly next series because that's a fun series. So the Sixers didn't look great last night. And Bede was down and out. The Heat were up 14. Hands on his knees. No one is better than Joel Embiid than looking like he's hurt. To remind you, hey guys, remember, I'm hurt. So don't judge me. But then, there was a Frenchman that we didn't even know was on the team named Nicole Batum. And he hit six three-pointers. And they won by one. Should have covered the goddamn four and a half. But the ref called an insane inbounds call on fucking Batoon himself. I'm a Nicholas Batoon. Oh, a French Rocky. Rocky with your American flag shorts. And your raw eggs. You run the steps like a dumb Italian. You dumb dago. Oh. 
I will build you a tiny little Allen Iverson statue, just a little mini Iverson, maybe next to a mini Eric Snow. Johnny Dawkins driving to the lane, kicking it out to Hersey Hawkins. Allen Houston. Brings it back for the Knickerbockers. That was the last time the Knicks were relevant in the plaintiff series. The Knicks are the two seed. They are playing the Sixers. They're a slight favorite, the Knicks. They're minus 120. You can get the Sixers at even money. Two versus seven. But everyone thinks the Sixers had a chance until they saw them last night. But that's what they like to do. They like to tell you, Embiid likes to act like he's hurt. Listen, Tom Thibodeau does this every year. He's a regular season coach. He gets his players and he grinds them into the ground. And they play defense because he loves the regular season. He thinks every game matters. It does not. It's the NBA. The opposite is true. And then they go into playoffs and they lose because they work them too hard. And everyone plays defense come playoff time. Although this year... I will say they're more exciting, and he got himself a bunch of Villanova guys, you know, a bunch of street brawler, hustle guys. So they're kind of more his speed. Still, we're going to take the Sixers a plus money. Bomb that. Why? Mainly because of Knicks fans. I cannot stand them. New York Knicks fans are hilarious. I know a lot of them. I know a lot of New Yorkers. Um, they're intelligent people. They're cynical people. They're New Yorkers. They got to add to the whole fucking thing. Except when it comes to the Knicks. Then they become children. Then they become these fucking delusional kids. Like, oh, we got spunk. We're going to do it this year. They get fooled every year. And this year especially, we just took out the number one seed, the Celtics. Yeah, the Celtics had the shit wrapped up a month ago. They didn't care. Grover says I'm a terrible troll. Grover, I was just fucking around with you. You made a joke. I made a joke. No big deal. I love you. Nothing personal. 2001 Sixers run was amazing. Larry Brown. Dikembe Mutombo. They traded Theo Ratliff midseason for Dikembe Mutombo. George Lynch. Was their starting three guard? You look back at that roster, like good god, how do they score anything more than Iverson's forty points a game? God bless Alan Iverson. Whoa, I just went over to the. If you're watching on the monitor, you can see my thumbnail with my face on the logo. On the Jerry Lug. I could, I could do that Rocky statue again. It's so great. Hey, uh, Philadelphia, it's a Sly Stallone. I thought I'd leave you a statue as a gift. What do you say? Do you want the guy from Tango and Cash on the top of your steps of your world-famous art museum or no? Will it be cool? Now everyone will think you're racist because you got a statue of me instead of Joe Frazier. Bubba Chuck, you get a two-foot statue. That's what you get. Moses Malone, you get two and a half. But the guy from Throw Mama from the Train, he gets a ten-foot statue, you know what I mean? Because it's too heavy to put on the plane, so fuck it. You get a gift. That, that music's very... Very addicting. It made me want to run through a wall, then it made me stop. Now it makes me want to take the Knicks, actually. I think I might just talk myself out of it. Too late. We laid that bomb. All right, let's move on. Sixers, I can talk about it bullshit all day. Um, so far, we have Orlando over Cleveland at plus 175. Uh, Dallas Mavericks over the Clippers at minus 136. Nuggets and five at plus 275. And the Sixers, even money, plus four. A lot of plus monies. Uh, French Lamana says the Clippers will never matter. The Nets of the West Coast. 
You're right. They're like the White Sox. They're the Clippers. They're the Angels. They're just that secondary team in that market. It doesn't matter what happens. Even if they win, no one will give a shit. Although they are a pretty funny team this year with Harden. Harden and Westbrook and, my God, play some Nipsey Hustle, if you will. I didn't even play the basketball music because I usually only do it for war. You know? Oh, I forgot they took it away from me. I have to do it down here, don't I? Or I don't. I should know these things before I do it. Is it on here? I don't think it is. I always have to do it here. You know, like when uh, I ran bombed uh, Israel. It's going to be World War Three, but it got intercepted. So that's it. We're fine. No, nothing to see here. We can go get our gasoline. No, we're going to attack back. God. <laughs> All right, let's get through another uh, series bomb. What's, a good, what's another good series price? Pacers Bucks. We might as well talk about that. This is even money, but I mean, before Giannis got hurt, everyone likes the Pacers now. I mean, they got Doc. Everything is going against the Bucks. They have Doc Rivers as their coach. Giannis got hurt. They were looking awful down the stretch. Damian Lillard already does not care. He acts like he doesn't give a shit. But here's the thing with the Pacers. They started out pretty hot. Then Halliburton got hurt. Since Halliburton's came returned from his injury, he really hasn't been the same guy. He's averaging like eight points less a game. This is a, this series before Giannis got hurt. They were like minus two ten. They dropped a dollar to get a coin flip on the Bucks to beat the Pacers. Oh boy, I can't believe I'm going to talk myself into a Milwaukee Bucks. Um, but they're playing Indiana. And I'm on a straight Indiana fade now after the WNBA draft with Caitlin Clark and that announcer or reporter, I should say. <laughs> um, so real quick. Let's do Milwaukee. I want to take the Milwaukee Bucks at the discounted price. Doc Rivers, if he loses in the first round here, this would be man. He won't take the credit. He won't take the blame for it, but that will be pretty amazing for Doc Rivers. I think they pull it out. Bucks in seven, but we'll take the Bucks at minus 115. Bob. Those are my five series bombs for the first round. Bucks minus 115. Just been, who was that Indianapolis reporter who, called, who was uh, Greg Doyle? That's who it was. If you didn't see, Caitlin Clark Number one draft pick in the WNBA draft. We'll talk about that. Obviously, the, uh, the most watched WNBA draft of all time. Yeah, no shit. You know what the other WNBA drafts used to be? It used to be like nine in the morning, the day after the women's championship game. Seriously. This was like the third one ever televised that I can recall. Not to discredit. I don't care. Point is, and when people make fun of WNBA, we're not even making fun of the players. It's not their fault. It's just the especially when ESPN has the contract for it, they just shove it down your fucking throat and they want to tell you, they just tell you, you like it. Taste this. You like it. I don't like it. I'm telling you, you like it. You like sushi. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Eat this sushi. Try this sushi. It's like saying you don't like reggae music. So have you heard this reggae? Yes, I've heard that. I don't care. It's not going to change my opinion on it. Anyway, Caitlin Clark, the number one superstar, uh, was having a press conference, which is always weird. You guys have a press conference. Introduce yourself to the media. And uh, Greg Doyle, who's won prizes, won Nobel Prizes, whatever. Typical, he, he, he came across as the typical, like, the dad of a daughter, the daughter's having her friends over, and he's like the, like Kevin Spacey in uh, American Dream, whatever the movie, American Dream? 
<laughs> What's that fucking Kevin Spacey American? Uh, American Beauty, American Dream, uh, American Beauty. The you know the dad of the fucking of the daughter and bringing her friends over and he like f- flirts with them. It's just really creepy. So she had a press conference and he gave her he gave her the heart. You know you put the hands in a heart thing and he goes here. You first of all, Caitlin here. And she's like, oh, you like that? That's what I do. Uh, I do that to my family after the game. And he goes, uh, oh, as long as you give me one of those hearts, we'll be in good shape. And everyone's like, what? Why are you creeping on Caitlin Clark like that? Oh, because I'm a middle-aged I'm white man, and I don't, I don't know how to act in front of younger women. That's why. So then he got up. Here's the thing. No one knows. Men don't know how to cover the WNBA. They don't know how to cover anything. They don't know how to compliment. They don't know how to do any of that. But when they do fuck up, it becomes such a guy, it's such an issue. And there's 20 think pieces of here's what women have to go through with the men. That's why we know there's no women in sports journalism. Jesus Christ. Can't people just be terrible anymore and you let it go? Let the terribleness be better. Okay. He'll try to be better. He already apologized for it. He's corny. She was on the Pat McAfee show and they cut her, they cut the commercial. And I was like, they cut her off to her mid answer to her question, a commercial. It's not like, it actually, like everything's like intentional. Like there's some fucking, <laughs> some Bond villain producer up there. Enough of these women talking, go, go to our ads, cut her off. She, her opinion means nothing. Cause it's a woman. Like, no, it's just a TV glitch. It happens all the fucking time. A big thing after the WNBA draft was the uh, salary thing. That was huge. That that one that got spread on Twitter. Here's the salaries, and I guess she's making like seventy thousand, Caitlin Clark, or three hundred thousand for the next four years. Not nothing, nothing great when it turns, especially when it compared to the NBA players. So then you have both sides of that. You have uh, women go. They should make just as much as the men. This is what we're talking about. The wage gap. All right. This is not the wage gap. This is two different leagues where one makes money. One does not. Now, does the WNBA have money? Is it embarrassing? I look, yes. Should they make more money? Of course. Why not? Just for the aesthetics. I like that. Just for the aesthetics. But the problem is the WNBA. They're an e- they're, they, they suck as a fucking league. When, did, when this league started, how long did it go did this start? I remember when this league started. Was it 20 years ago? More than that? But when it came out, when it, when it first started, 96? Is that true? And they started playing in 97. All right. There were two leagues. It was like WNBA and the ABA. I believe they were called and they made an ABA paid the players more. They treated them. Well, they, tr- they gave them Russian dollars. If you know what I mean? Like that's why women go over and play in Russia. Cause they get paid a, a decent wage, but the WA just stomped them out. Cause they were the name. I'm not saying Caitlin Clark should make as much money as Wembyana for being the number one pick. I'm not saying that, but I do believe she should make more money than Jake from State Farm. That I get behind. Jake from State Farm was everywhere in this WNBA draft. What the fuck? He's hugging the girls. He's he's like he's the commissioner. That was that was the most embarrassing thing about this stuff. And people are finally have had enough of this new Jake from State Farm. Hey, uh, this is Lenny Dyker. <laughs> I've always had a thing with this new Jay from State Farm. And it's not because I don't even want to get in that right side where they say, ah, oh, they just replace him because he's woke, because they got woke. Which it is true. It was kind of a disgrace. <laughs> Remember during the uh during the George Floyd thing afterwards, whatever, and it was just a whole reckoning where companies were just like Oh, the all white cabinets of companies were replacing their white mascots with uh <laughs> black ones or any persons of color just to show solidarity. Did they give him any real jobs behind the, uh, in the, in the boardroom? No, no, they didn't, but they, they made, uh, you know, 
PR appearances like they did. They replaced Aunt Jemima or f whatever the fuck. They didn't, you know, do any actual change of, you know, giving them job opportunities. But one of the things they did do was Jake from State Farm, a mascot for an insurance company. It was some corny white dude. At least he would do stuff. Then they just replaced him with this handsome black guy. He and they didn't. They didn't explain it. It was like one of those uh, Aunt Vivian things from Fresh Prince. They just replaced them, and there's no question about it. Wait, you're Aunt Viv now? You're forty shades. You're a couple shades lighter, aren't you? Yeah, I'm Aunt Viv. Don't question it. I'm Jake from State Farm. No, what happened to the other Jake? What other Jake? Okay. So now it's this new Jake. The black Jake. Woke Jake. Woke from State Farm. And he's handsome. I get it. They definitely upgraded that. But he does nothing. This is what I was upset about him. He does fucking nothing. And he smiles and he knows he's like irreplaceable. And he, like, he smiles like he got like... What other commercial, like brand or mascot, whatever the hell it is, spokesman, do they make the celebrity guest do all the work? Like, look at the State Farm commercials. Like, Andy Reid comes on. Patrick Mahomes is doing a fucking character at the shoe store. Reid's doing, like, little chicken nugget meal fucking bits. They're doing they're doing level three improv class, like, skits. While Jake just sits here, come on, man. <laughs> you don't have to do that. You're, you're a good neighbor, or whatever the fuck their slogan is. And now he's out there, and he, like, he's a celebrity. He's everywhere. He's ringside at the fights. And they, and they introduced me. There's Jake from State Farm. There he is. Don't we all love him? Love him. What does he do? He does nothing. It used to be the celebrity goes on there and he does nothing. And then the other guy is a buffoon. He wears the belt and says, hey, Rogers, and gets on the wing of a plane. Anyway. Point is, it was insulting to see Caitlin Clark the biggest star the WNBA has already as she comes into the league, even though she hasn't played a game for them, but she's a superstar. Have to share the spotlight with Jake from State Farm. <laughs> There's like, here's a behind the scenes photo shoot. Thanks, State Farm. We don't give a shit. Nobody cares about your insurance commercials. Oh my God. Look at me getting upset. Might as well get to the box if I'm gonna do this shit, right? If I'm gonna get if I wanna get this upset, get to the box. Oh man, yes. Yeah. I, I, look at me getting angry and not in the box. Now I'm in the box. Listen, there's good corporate mascots. I'm not saying there isn't, but at least let them do something. French Lamont says Joe Camel is the only corporate mascot he ever cared about. He was good. But at least they, that's what I'm saying. The other mascots, they did something. They got out there. This new guy, he does nothing. He smiles. He makes everyone else work. Drake had to do some work. Mahomes has the, I mean, Travis Kelsey has to do it. And he just sits there and chuckles out. It's ridiculous. Serial says he's the same thing as Jerry Jones with the Cowboys. Joe, at least Jones gets drunk on scotch. I can I can handle that. Jerry World. Not a lot of sports. He got my NBA series bombs. Uh, there's college spring games going on there. Good Lord. Alabama had like 70,000 people at their spring game. I watch, I watch these things in Ohio State, too. And they packed the stadium for their spring practice games. I feel, I'm not saying they shouldn't have the right to vote, but do they need two senators? Does everyone have the same? I mean, can we, can we take out some electoral college votes for these states that sell out spring practice and football? If this is what you're putting your time and money into, the red, crimson, white game, eh, maybe your vote shouldn't count as much in the rest of the country. I'm just saying. That's for my, that's for that take. <laughs> All right, let me get out of the corporate mascot world. 
Should I tell you about the ghost doctor? Yeah, I've been I've been talking about this ghost doctor for a while. I should get into it. Let me play. Let me play. Let's stop. I should I should preface this. Thank you for listening to the Bottom Line Bombs, the Man in a Box, the Bat Detective. Please subscribe on YouTube. Hit the thumbs up if you're liking it. If you're not liking it, I don't care. Hit the thumbs up anyway. Subscribe to my feed, the Bottom Line Bombs. Follow me on Instagram. Oh, I forgot to put that shit on there. Good God, I'm all, I've been all over the place. At CJ Sullivan underscore on Twitter. At CJ Sullivan was taken from Instagram. Um. You got a lot of shit stand up shows coming up this weekend. If you're in Milwaukee, come to the Laughing Tap Friday and Saturday. I'll be there headlining there. Then I'm going to Chicago. If you're in Chicago, Monday, I went to Lincoln Lodge. Great venue run by Mark Geary. The most the longest independent running stand up comedy club in the country. Wednesday, I'll be at the Comedy Bar. And then next weekend, C. Generates, I'll be in Winnipeg. Do I have any Manitoba, Winnipeg? See Jenner fans, come and see me at Rumors, along with the great T.J. Miller. Anyway, let's get to the Ghost Doctor. I've been hyping this up long enough. All right, See Jenner. You know how there's crime podcasts? People have told me I should make this a crime podcast. Finding the Ghost Doctor. If you may or may not know, uh, back in late January and early February, time around the Super Bowl, I got a little ill, got a little sick, got pneumonia in my lung and some sepsis. It was, it was bad. I was in the hospital for a couple weeks. Got out. We're back at it. We're healthy, sort of. Fought the Magic Johnson disease, as Grover said. Anyway. My pulmonary doctor, which is, means lung doctor, from the hospital. He he did like certain things. He did he did expiratory things. He did a procedure where he drained me. And the hospital there, Santa Monica, St. Thomas, they're like, yeah, we never heard of him. This is his first time doing it for us, so we're interested to see what he does. Okay, that's a little off-putting, but all right. He came from somewhere, right? Yeah, he came from USC, he said. All right, USC sounds reputable. Anyway, we do the stint. I get out of the hospital. In my discharge papers is his phone number and his address. I thought. I'm obviously, I have to set up an appointment with him. I call the, call the phone number on there. Voicemail. And not just any voicemail. A generic, hey, no one here right now, leave a message. Not you've even reached the offices of Dr. So-and-so. All right. I call again next week. Voicemail. Generic. Now it's fast. Now it's like it's going right to it. It's not even it's not even attempting to ring like someone's gonna pick it up, you know. Alright, it's a bit odd. And I talked to my other doctor. I'm like, what do you think the deal is? Have you heard of this guy before? I'm like, no, I haven't, but that's crazy. No one picked up. You need to get an appointment. You need to get a CT scan. He need to put it on a disc. He wanted it on a disc. Who even wants it on a disc anymore? So she goes, this is the secretary of this other doctor. Just stop by the office. Stop by the address and be nice because they get sensitive. Don't think, you know, slip it underneath the door. That's what she wanted me to do. She wanted me to slip the CD underneath the door. So I drove to this address. It was in West LA. Was it a doctor's office? No. It was just a condo building where people lived. I got in. They're like, are you here for the open house? Like, no, I'm here for a doctor. The guy that was like, what? Okay. I don't know what fetish that is or weird scenario that is, but all right, go ahead. I go to the number, and uh, sure enough, the unit number was just a closed apartment. The address they gave me. It wasn't boarded up, but it was closed. This is Friday at 4.30. 
So I'm thinking, ah, well, maybe they went home. Maybe everyone went home early weekend. That happened. So I tried again Tuesday morning around 9 a.m., 10 a.m. Closed again. What is going on with this ghost doctor? I looked him up online. A lot of one-star Yelp reviews. Says, yeah, this happened to me. I set up an appointment. He didn't show up. He ghosted me. The ghost doctor ghosted me. What? Who is this guy? Does he have a license? Did he get removed? Does he... Does he go down below to Mexico and do procedures under, you know, in a back alley somewhere? I needed to know more. So I called the hospital. This is what they do in these crime podcasts. I need, I need to go record like sound bites and actual phone calls. So I called the hospital. I said, hey, uh, this doctor you gave me uh, doesn't exist anymore. Do you know... Do you know the deal with that is? Like, oh, no, we don't know. So what do you want to do? You want another doctor? Yeah, I guess so. Sure, now I'll take another doctor. But uh, also, you should know that you have a con man walking the halls of your hospital if he's there at all. They didn't seem bothered. They're like, oh, well, here's a new doctor. Go to them. So I had an appointment scheduled for later on. Next thing you know, month goes by, another month goes by, I go through all these antibiotics. Out of nowhere, I got a phone call. It said USC. I go, what? I'm going to answer this. I normally wouldn't answer. An audience, see generous, I tell you, I answered the phone call two months after being discharged from the hospital. And it was the ghost doctor himself. Not even the crew. Not even a secretary. Nothing. Him. Hey, CJ, how you doing? How am I doing? The fuck you mean? How am I doing? How? Where were you? Who are you? What do you mean? How am I? Where? How are you doing? I'm fine. No thanks to you. Where you been? He goes. Oh, I just got your message. We were moving offices. What? What does that have to do with a voicemail? Well, there's a lot of things flying around and move things. But anyway, how, how, how did you get that CT scan? Yeah, I got it, but it's fucking two months old now. Who knows what the hell that thing says? Anyway, would you like an appointment? I go, well, I kind of moved on, Doc, to a new guy. I goes, oh, I hate to hear that. I hate to hear that. But I said, you know what, ghost doctor? We've gone too far. I've been looking high and low for you. Let's do an appointment anyway. Let's see where this goes. Let's see how, let's see if you have an, I'm on, this is like George Costanza level now. Do you have an office? Where is it? What does USC stand for in your world? Oh, we're getting late. Maybe I should, maybe I should leave this as a teaser. That's how these podcasts work. Join me next week while we continue the conclusion of what happened when I saw the ghost doctor live and in person. And oh, see, generates. It is a doozy. There was talks of machines. Also, when I called the, 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 the when she called me to make the appointment, I, uh, I was like, uh, yeah, I heard you guys switch offices. I switch offices. We've been here for a year. I've been on, we've been on the fifth floor for years. But that's why he said that's why he couldn't contact me. Oh, oh. She gave me the oh, oh. That's right. He's a liar. Our our, our boss is a liar. Very scary. It is a spooky story, anyway. That's part of the Ghost Doctor podcast. So it'll conclude next week as we uh, get through. I'll be doing it from the road. I'll be in Chicago doing remote shows. But the bottom line, bottom C generates will occur. Happen here. Thank you for everyone for joining us. Everyone in the chat room. Serial ML. French Lamagna. Grover the dog. Even you, buddy. I'm just joking along with you. Moneyline Mills. 
throw his parlay up there again. There, who's, who's, who's worried? He's worried about Doc Rivers's future. I am not. Um, I gave out five serial five bo- five series bombs and two regular games, of course, as well. Was, uh, Pelicans and the Bulls. After that, that'll do it. So thank you, everybody, for joining us here. Good luck.